that one is three years and some months of course. So um well something I think special about me is that I'm HIV positive. I've been positive my whole life. That is for 27 years. And um I remember I was raised in the village, so <laughs> So that's why I will say I wish I had English here, Emily. I just started learning all these English and, and putting them together after, after 18 years old. So otherwise I've been in the village more or less my whole life. When my, I was born here in Nakuru, by the way, I was born in Nakuru. Yeah, I was born in Nakuru. And, uh, <laughs> because I've not been here for so long. Yeah, and then we stayed here for some time in some estate in Etowa, because you guys know Posta? So my dad used to work for Posta, and then when uh, he got so sick, and then went home back in the village, and then at five years old, he passed on. So um, then um, now we had our mom, and then, um, you know, I'm a Luo, so normally Luos, they love wife inheritance and all that, you know? So she had to sneak us out of the village at six years old and then we came to Nairobi and we stayed in Nairobi for like two years. We are six of us but then the two of us, the last two of us were, the, were like we were so, you know, fragile, not the other four. Yeah, so uh, we sneak, she sneaked us into Nairobi and then um, I stayed in the slums for like uh, I think two to three years in Madari slums. And uh, during that time, uh, of course, now one of our siblings came back, um, came to Nairobi, and then she, uh, he um, he said, you know what, you guys live in a very bad environment, so I need to take you away from mom. And uh, he did exactly that, so took us to our uncle, and then after a year, when I was 10, my mom passed on. So, uh, so then... Um, when I was about 16 years old, when my dad and mom passed on, my, my, my uncle was so supportive in like paying our fees and all that, yeah? So at 16, that I didn't even feel that I don't have parents. I can't lie to you that, you know, I felt some aki wo ye, that okay, kai ni na tesua, you know, I'm some offer and all that, I don't know. Like, my uncle really treated us so well that I even forgot that my mom and dad passed on, you know? So at 16 years old, I went to Asumbi Girls High School. Uh, Asumbi is in uh, Nyanza. At 16, there's this organization that came and they were giving soda and bread. So I said, okay, then I'm going to get the soda and bread. Like, literally, when you do it, you trade your blood with soda and bread. You know, you're like, okay, what is my blood? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, of course, I went for the soda and bread. And I remember it was bread. You know, see, is it Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we, we had bodies, and uh, yeah. So I went for the soda and bread. And I remember the counselor saying, asking me, uh, do you know your HIV status? And I said, no. All this time, she was talking, and I felt like she was wasting my time, you know, because soda and bread in Aisha Uko. So, and assuming girls, we were 1,500 at that time. Yeah, so you can imagine the 1500 of us, all of us were scrambling for the soda and bread in the name of getting a HIV test, you know. Yeah, so then I went there and then um, at some point I was told, um, I was asked, do you have a boyfriend? And I'm like, no, at this point, but don't ask me, I think you can tell us, you know, like, there are so many questions that are so unnecessary. And finally, um, she told me that double line is HIV positive, single line is HIV negative. At this time, I'm just done with her. You know, I'm like, okay, so it's funny to test. <laughs> so we did the test, and then it came out double line. So that means that I was HIV positive. And uh, I remember walking out of uh, the, the counseling room. It was like a room like this one, and then with those locals that should be in them. Yeah, and then, um, so we were so many in one room, because uh, basically they just wanted to collect data. Um, so walking out with my dumbness, I still went for the soda and bread, even after realizing that I'm HIV positive. I remember going, signing, yeah, and then I took the soda and bread, but now I could not take it. I could not have the soda and bread, literally, because I felt like my whole world is so small and it's come to an end, you know? So I thought to myself, by the way, who can I really confide in? As Penny and I thought of my best friend, I didn't think about my other siblings, though they were so supportive. They would come for those visitings and all that. So like I told you guys, I was so comfortable in school, yeah? 
I went to uh, my best friend and I told her that I am HIV positive because of this last test. And then she, she just said, okay, Fanny, you play too much. Like, you talk too much. At this point, you're lying. It was in 2008. In 2008, even outside school, when you'd be tested for HIV, they would write for you. Positive plus VE, you know, minus VE. Yeah. So I had the evidence and my number. My number, I think, was 236. I was the 236th person. You can imagine how many people went for that test, yeah? So I went and I gave her the evidence and she was like, wow, you're really HIV positive. So she assured me that she'd be there for me because most of her aunts uh, and uncles are HIV positive. It's not a big deal. And you know, those are the days that we had all these billboards, you know, it was a big deal, literally, you know, because when you are, when you are traveling, you know, yeah. So I went, uh, uh, well, after some four days, my best friend, uh, no, I went to serve um, Gideri, I remember, I love Gideri back at Leobado, so I went to serve Gideri, and then um, I hear some whispers, Walking down the DH, you know, not like what on a sukuna in your Fungwanga counter. So, see, 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 I think that was the second time that I was not that I was wasting food. You know, the first time was with the soda and bread. I didn't have it. I dropped it, and then now this one literally it's gideri. I didn't have the gideri. You know, so I went back to the dormitory and I told my best friend that okay, I heard that uh, people say uh, that I'm HIV positive, and she told me, you know what? Before you continue, give me my blankets, <laughs> utensils that I gave you uniform and everything of mine that you have because you're going to infect me with the virus being HIV negative babies and uh, you know I mean you, you've been discriminated in school and with all these men so I thought to myself I can come out but then these other men were also hitting on me at this time still and now I was so tired with, uh, with telling every other man that I'm HIV positive, I'm HIV positive, and them, of course, rejecting me. So I thought I need to come out publicly and uh, tell people that I'm HIV positive. My main agenda, sad enough, of coming out the first time was that I wanted to bash this man, you know? I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm just tired of all these men uh, hitting on me one by one. So I want to address them publicly on my timeline. I came out on Facebook. But then after that, um, I thought, uh, you know, it was more than just that, you know. I figured there are actually people that don't have uh, enough knowledge about HIV. I remember my, my, my post was shared about 1,500 times in 2017, and I told myself, well, is this thing such a big deal like this, you know. I thought I would just make a post about HIV and then keep on posting my stupid things on Facebook and life goes on. But now I figured, wow, I, these people need knowledge about HIV, and I have it. I'm not doing anything about it. So I started, uh, you know, updating about HIV and all that. Yeah, I think my dad knew me in uh, 2018, last year. Yeah. So, um, of course, I received my better share. You can imagine in Facebook, it's social media. So I received my better share of um, social uh, bullies. Uh, you name it, everything. I remember someone saying that, ah, you, you got infected by, through prostitution at 16 years old. You know? I mean, there were so many things happening at this time. And I had to just develop a very thicker skin. And the more I received all this negative energy, the more I thought to myself, wow, I'm doing such an amazing job. No one has my story. I need to own it even more and more because I don't, I don't see anyone doing it in a special way that I'm doing it. So I need to go on and on. So that's how I started, uh, you know, preaching about uh, stigma-free society because the more years went by, 2017, 2018, now 2019, stigma has come <coughs> different faces. Like now, you tell someone that you're HIV positive, you guys are not shocked that much, you know. You're like, ah, okay, uh, it's so normal, people are HIV positive and all that. I always say that stigma is advanced in 2019. 
normally would reject you, but then they'll just use um, some very decent English <laughs> to, you know, they'll say, ah, it's okay, you know, everything is fine. I mean, um, you know, when you, when they even have this knowledge about, you know, having undetectable viral load and all that, but then no one wants to associate with you. You know, I lost so many friends on the way, I lost so many relatives on the way, uh, it's been crazy, but then it has really, really changed who I am. Um, this year I was named as a top 100 most influential women in the world by uh, oh. the yeah. Women Appreciating Women in Kenya, it's in, the, it's in London, and it's, so I figured, okay, then now I'm, I'm you know, I remember last year when they telling me, you're going international, you just don't know, you don't know, you know. And you know, that's why I always tell people, when someone takes a chance in you, you need to really respect them, you know. When she was telling me that at that time when we were meeting uh, for this um, trip, and uh, I didn't believe what she was telling me. Honestly, she was telling me all those things, and I'm just like, no, oh, please, you know. The torture to so you know, Kawaida to we are. So, and she told me, no, mom, you know you're doing such an amazing job that no one is doing it, you know, and no one is really putting it out there the way you are, and you're really changing lives. Until now, you know, this year, and then I started getting all this uh, nice recognition, and I was like, wow, then I'm doing such an amazing job, you know? But one thing that I've really learned throughout this journey that I can tell you guys, not even about being HIV positive or anything, every one of you has their own special story. If you own your story, you'll irritate people. You'll um, the people who want most of them won't really like it. Uh, most people are out there for themselves. You know, we are always out here for ourselves. You know, we that's why what Mode is doing is such an amazing thing. Like really having this platform for us women to engage and you know talk and everything. People don't want to uplift each other. Mm -hmm. And especially if you have such a strong story, they'll try and, and put you down, kabisa, kabisa. They, they'll do everything. They'll spread all the rumors in the world. Pako chashanga, kwani duplicate wangu yuko uko inza. Kuna feni ya witi mwingine uko. Doing all these bad things, you know. Because you're, a, you're doing such an amazing job. And for me, I believe that in as much as fine, even if you're HIV positive in this house, in this place, you cannot necessarily be like me come out publicly disclose and everything but you have your own special story not only hiv you know you have your own special story one thing that you need to do is just own your story because it is your only pillar you know own it kabisa kabisa whether you are from a very wealthy background or poor background or whatever just own your story sana sana it really puts people down and it builds your confidence it builds your self-esteem it builds yourself um Consciousness, you're aware of what you're doing and you believe in yourself. I'm talking to you about the people who are in the world. I'm talking to you about the You know, tell me something that I don't know about myself. You know, because I've sat down in Medjita Mkutano and I'm owning myself. You know, yeah. Or oh, sometimes back, so ARVs transition from. <coughs> having very nice legs to these thin legs, and then matako ikakwa, nat kabisa and all that, you know? And then the boobs were all this. And then I sat down and started beating myself. But then when you throw pity parties, no one turns up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I said, you know what, Penny, you're so beautiful. Who, people really admire big boobs on a different thought, you know? Like, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's such a great opportunity, yeah? So I think I'm, I'm done, I'll just show you the ARVs. These are my ARVs this year. I took, um, we were from two pills daily to now one pill daily. HIV is not a big deal for real, for real this time. But now, we still don't have information. So because we don't have information, I told you that people are doing what is called advanced stigma syndrome because they're so clever. All of us are, are educated and all that. But now one-on-one, -on -one, you'd never want to be HIV positive, you know. These drugs have, have um, major side effects, you know, they'll make you, uh, we are always told to check our kidneys from time to time. Uh, we are told to, uh, when I was intro being introduced to this one pill daily, I remember having nightmares, like I would be dreaming that 
there's a python yenye na nyuma mimi na watoto you know very very crazy things insomnia and all that but then everyone is going through something sindio mm -hmm. yeah everyone is going through something i'm taking these pills every day if i sit down and pity myself there's someone who is diabetic and they even more expensive than mine you know and there's someone who is not going through cancer it's even more expensive you know these drugs are not expensive and the more i started telling people about this phase is the more they started saying that i'm romanticizing hiv because they know i'm owning it you know so i told people okay i had a chance of i had the negative side of hiv and the positive side of hiv the people who are living with the negative side of hiv you know aki wo yeta na jen kono ukimu yaki nenda kukufa you know who is not taking dawa mpaka akufe sikizi kila mtu anachukua dawa in different ways you know hiv is bad so what do i throw pity parties and then you won't show up i can't do that yeah so just on your story it's the only powerful thing that you have trust me it is just own it can be said cover it and just i don't know embrace it protect it guard it can be said it's your story it's no one else's asante ni sana